all welcome to tech capture so in this video we are going to discuss about our next compute service that is a google kubernetes engine so in past videos we discussed about google compute engine we deployed sample application on google compute engine then we discussed about google app engine there also we deployed a sample application and did some hands-on on the google app engine now this is our next service that is a google kubernetes engine so Google Kubernetes engine nothing but the managed version of the Kubernetes on Google Cloud platform. So this is similar to the EKS in AWS or EKS in Azure where all the clouds provide these kind of managed Kubernetes service. But yeah, to understand the basic, first I want you to understand what is a Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is nothing but the container orchestration tool. So again, we'll jump into the basic, what is a container, okay? So we'll try to understand what is a container first. And once we understood, okay, what is the container, then we'll go into a GKE and Cloud Run because these two services using the containers in a Google Cloud. Okay, so let's try to see what is a containers. So to understand the containers in more better way, I'll just give you a real life example. So a couple of months back, I went to London on a business trip. So before going to London, I decided to list down the items I'll be needing when I'll be on my business trip. So I listed down I'll be needing uh, adapters because the Indian chargers are not compatible with the UK socket. Again, the list of cloth I'll be needing for my office visit, for my professional meeting and then the day-to-day -day items for my toiletries okay so all these items so instead of going and struggling in london to get these items available so i just pack them together along with me okay so i just pack these items along with me and then i pack them into my bag and i carried my bag to the london and when i was there in london for a few days i just used my items and did not have any struggle to get these items in the london so similar concept is there for these technical containers as well. So instead of struggling to get your dependencies on a required server, you will just package all your source code, your dependencies, your dependent libraries, so whatever you need, you just pack them into a container image and you will just ship your container image and deploy your image as and when required. So you will not face any of the version issues, you will not face any of the dependency issues because you already have your dependencies and required libraries along with you okay so now let's try to understand the containers in technical terms it was just example hope it helped you to understand if not we'll go again and try to understand again in the technical term so first we'll see what was the traditional deployment approach before a container was introduced so there was a hardware then there was operating system you can assume at a server and the applications are deployed on server let's assume application one which is a python flask application and this application is having their own dependencies and library so dependencies to execute a python application you will need a python libraries for executing or running python flask application you need a python flask libraries and you have application 2 let's assume this is some data related application which work on processing the data so it needs libraries numpy it needs libraries like uh, python pandas or some machine learning libraries and third is your java application so all these applications are having different different requirement and different different dependencies now let's assume your applications or your server is currently having python 3.10 and now one of your application having dependency issues that they are not supporting on python 3.10 and you need to upgrade to 3.11 now if you want to upgrade 3.11 a Python version on your server you have to test Python application 1 as well if it will work fine on Python 3.11 application 2 as well if it will work on Python 3.11 as well and in case if your application 1 is not supported on 3.11 and your application 2 is not supported on Python 3.10 now you are in conflict so what you will do so instead of doing this or uh, traditional deployment you can use a container so after that the concept of container was introduced so how you will use a containers now so in terms of container what will happen you will have hardware you will have operating system and you will have a container engine that is kind of docker software installed on your system and then you will have application 1, application 2, application 3, similar setup but they will have their own set of libraries and dependencies along with them now on the same set of 
virtual machine or same set of the environment your application 1 ha can run on the python 3.10 your application 2 can run on a different version of python your application 3 can run on different version of java so they will run with their own libraries and dependencies and they will just share the os they will not require a huge infrastructure these lights kind of lightweight containers and they will use the same infrastructure but they will use their own libraries and dependencies which they packed along with them okay so this is how the containers will work and we can use a container orchestration tool deploy these containers manage these containers now hope you understood the basic concept of container now let's try to understand more theoretical way again so what is containers so container is like a box that holds everything an application needs to run so suppose your application needs Python version for running if your application need a flask libraries if your application needs some additional requirement so you will club them together into that container image so you will just pack all the codes libraries tools and setting that your application requires okay so containers used to build ship deploy and scale your application so you will just build all the dependencies and you can ship them through the container image okay so what are the key features of the container so self contain so just like your travel bag has everything for your trip a container includes everything an application need so it will have their own code their own libraries set of tools and configuration files so they having all the things self contained okay so these are portable so you can use a build container image everywhere you can build same container image on google cloud you can use the same image on the aws so these are the portable okay so it can run on your laptop on any servers on any cloud without just adjusting anything because it is the same container image you can run everywhere these are lightweight okay containers are smaller than traditional virtual machine and isolated each container works independently so one app won't interfere another app it's like a container is its own little world okay. this is all about a container now let's try to understand some concept related to the containers first is a container engine so what is container engine so container engines are responsible for creating and running containers so as we discussed we need to build all dependencies all source code together in a container image but who will build the container image or who will make sure this container running independently so that is nothing but the container engine okay so there are a different container engines available in the market so the most famous one is a docker so it is a widely used containerization platform for building shipping and running application in a container then we have again a podman by red hat it is again a demandless secure container engine that run containers and it is docker compatible the third we have a container d by cncf it is again a lightweight open source container runtime for managing containers and used along with the kubernetes so these are the most widely used container engine in the markets but most of the times you will face a docker as your container engine but other also you might face or you might have chance to work on other container engine as well okay so docker podman container d and there are others as well in the market i'll just try to cover the commonly used container engine now let's talk about one more concept here what is a container orchestration okay so when managing multiple containers across multiple service orchestration tools ensure they work seamlessly together now suppose if you have application which is microservice based application and one application have kind of uh, 20 or 25 services so each application or each of the services have their different container image how will make sure all your container services are working seamlessly on the servers because deploying single container is a fine but managing all these different different container images on the single server how you will manage that for this you need a orchestration tool a container orchestration tool so which are these container orchestration tool so now we came to kubernetes so this is the most famous container orchestration tool by google this is a powerful open source container orchestration platform for automating deployment scaling and management of containers then again we have a docker small 
swarm by docker if docker is a container engine as well as they provide the orchestration tool that is a docker swarm and it is a simple lightweight container orchestration tool into a docker okay for managing container clusters we have again the OpenShift by Red Hat. It is an enterprise Kubernetes based container orchestration platform with enhanced feature and a developer tools. Then a Nomad by HashiCorp. It is again a simple flexible workload orchestration for container VMs and other application in multi-cloud environment. So all these are container orchestration tools available in the market currently and widely used but most famous is Kubernetes. Now let's go deep into Kubernetes and try to understand a Kubernetes architecture okay so first see what is a managed Kubernetes so this is a Kubernetes architecture where you will have a control plane and you will have a worker node so your control plane will have your API server your scheduler your control manager and your HCD database but what is the difference between your open source Kubernetes and a managed Kubernetes so in your managed Kubernetes your control plane is completely managed by these cloud providers or service provider or your vendor so if it is a google kubernetes engine then your control plane is completely managed by a gcp if it is eks then control plane is completely managed by aws you will not have a control on it or if it is azure then your control plane is completely managed by azure so what are these different managed Kubernetes platform so you have Amazon EKS you have a case as Azure Kubernetes service and then we have a Google Kubernetes engine okay now hope we understood what is container some features of the containers okay then container engine what is a container orchestration tool and what is Kubernetes and what is a managed Kubernetes now we are at a point where we can start learning a Google Kubernetes engine. Now let's see what is a Google Kubernetes engine now. So what is a GKE or Google Kubernetes engine? So it is an open source container orchestration platform. So Kubernetes is open source container orchestration platform for automating the deployment, scaling operation and application containers. But GKE is managed version of Kubernetes built on Google Cloud's infrastructure providing flexibility of Kubernetes without hassle of managing underlying hardware. So suppose if you want to run your Kubernetes open source on your own server, you have to manage your own server, you have to manage your own storage, your own networking, all stuff you have to manage by yourself. If you are using a managed version, the underlying infrastructure is taken care by cloud provider as well as they will take care of the master or control plane as well. Okay, But why we should use a GKE? What are the advantages of using a GKE? for scalability because it will automatically scale your application based on the demand if there is high demand it will scale your infrastructure to 20 nodes 50 nodes 100 nodes based on your load and if there is no load it will just scale down your nodes as well high availability so in case of zone down you can have your regional cluster so your application will be running in another zone simplified management because google handles control planes so you have to focus on your workload only security because GKE provides inbuilt security options for your binary authorization for networking for firewalls are back so all options again will be provided in a Google Kubernetes engine in GKE when we create a cluster there are two options to create a cluster one is GKE autopilot and one is a GKE standard let's try to understand the difference between GKE autopilot and GKE standard so First, we'll talk about GKE Autopilot. So this is fully managed Kubernetes mode where Google handles both your control plane as well as your worker nodes. So you have to just deploy your image on the Autopilot cluster and it will take care of automatic scaling, optimize resource usage, reduce operational overhead. So it will just make it ideal for team seeking for simplicity and cost efficiency for managing the Kubernetes cluster. But suppose in case if you need a full control over your worker node, you need a custom configuration and greater flexibility, then you can go ahead with a GK standard where you will have full control on your worker node. You can decide what kind of machine type you need for your work, uh, worker node, what kind of uh, OS you need for your worker node. So you will have a full control on your GK standard on your worker node. 
so let's go to a Google Cloud documentation and try to understand some difference between autopilot versus standard GK cluster so I am on a Google Cloud a documentation let's try to zoom in okay and here there is some feature configuration so pre-configured means by default it's always enabled so it is just showing some terminology used in this table okay so now for autopilot the default version for a release is a regular channel but in standard you can set either to specific GK version or release channel or alpha cluster Kubernetes API so here we have option by default it is a regular channel but you can set your release channel or set specific GK version in China so here is no much difference but if you go for location availability so these are regional only at pilot clusters are regional but for standard you can create a regional as well as a zonal cluster okay so node management so autopilot manage your worker node as well as your control plane but in standard cluster you can create and manage your own nodes in a node pools so that is the major difference here just try to understand that in autopilot google takes care of your worker node as well as your control plane in autopilot but in standard you just need to take care of your workers nodes as well as your application programming now the node provisioning so in autopilot automatically scales the quantity and size of the node based on the pods in the cluster where in standard you have to manually provision your new nodes you have to manually specify the node resources or you have to manually specify the auto provisioning or auto scaling policies in your standard cluster so operating system so it is by default container optimized OS in autopilot if you go to standards by default it is the container optimized but you will have option to change the operating system but here in autopilot you don't have option to change the underlying OS so that is again the major difference here node compute configuration this is a general purpose platform that is optimized for most of the workload so you have a predefined compute classes custom compute classes and GPUs here also you will have most of the options you will have GPUs, local SSDs, custom compute classes, compute engine machines and hardware so you will have these options here as well so now the node upgrades and maintenance so we can see the difference here as well so it is pre-configured in autopilot but in standard you will have a customization option so you can set whatever you want in your node upgrade and maintenance so these were some major difference so you can see all the difference for autopilot and standard cluster in this document I just wanted to cover the major differences here so there are a lot of differences considering the networking considering the security so you can just go through this documentation and you will understand the difference between the autopilot cluster and standard cluster so that was all about a theoretical part of the GK now what we'll do we'll just jump into the hands-on so we'll work on the two demos in first demo we'll create a GKE autopilot cluster and we'll deploy a simple container image on a GKE autopilot in second demo we'll create a standard cluster from the scratch we'll build our own container image we'll just build small application we'll build our own container image we'll publish our container image to artifact registry and from artifact registry we'll deploy a container image on a Google Kubernetes standard cluster okay so that is the second hands-on demo we are going to perform so that's it for this video and now we'll just jump into hands-on and we'll see the demo in a next video